Welcome to the Keep On Side Show, and as you know, my name is Joel. Today, we're going to be speaking to ex-professional footballer, now turned football agent, Mr. Tony Finnegan. Tony, thanks for coming down. You're welcome, Joe. So we're going to start from the beginning, Tony. How did you get into football? I was eight, aged eight, and I knew that's what I wanted to do, if I'm honest. I think at the time, that it was 1970, I was a lot older than you, but because the World Cup was on, and I remember looking at it on the black and white TV and going, I want to be that man there. Yeah. Um, going to the playground and then pretending to be that man <laughs> in the playground, basically. Right. Okay. So, who spotted your potential? I would have just been playing for, say, the Scouts yeah. or the Boys Brigade. I grew up in Earlsfield, so okay. it's the borough of Wandsworth. Yeah. And then from suddenly playing for Wandle Boys in the playground, suddenly someone said, oh, you can play. And I didn't just enjoy myself. The next thing I got to 10, and then you're going on a trials for the borough. Right. So that's, what, that's when I realised, okay, I can play this game, you know. What was the highlights of your career? Uh, it's funny because now I'm 53 and it's over and I'm doing it as a different level now. It's mm. All of it was a highlight, to be honest. I don't regret one minute. Yeah. I wouldn't change any of it. Just signing professional as a footballer, true. is that's it. You know, yeah. and being a scholar, in them times, it's not like scholars now, they call it apprentices. Mm. It's a lot more regimented than 16 pounds a week. Okay. Lodgings in a room if you were living at home with your family. Yeah. If you lived in digs, it was 16 quid. You, that had to last you. You yeah. had to earn the right to get to play for the reserves. You had to earn the right to get picked for your youth team. So when did you realise that your playing career was coming to an end? I suppose that was obviously the low point. My last club was Berry, understand Turnant. Okay. And there were Gary Neville, everybody knows and Phil Neville. Their father was the chairman of that club for many, many years. But mm. I followed that manager. I remember at Berry, we played someone. I got the winger, got the ball, I closed him down. He turned and he ran me. Yeah. I kept up with him, but I could feel the tightness in my hamstrings. Yeah, you knew it was that time. I knew and I thought, the day will come where he'll run me and I can't catch him and <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> You know, yeah, like, yeah. so I thought that end of that season, stop. That was right. my dream at 15, 16, play to 35 and get into coaching or try and be a manager or yeah. do something within the game. So by the time I was probably 25 at Palace, I always had thoughts of, I want to stay in football. So what made you go into representing players? Andy Gray and I just had discussions and I was always trying to lead it to go into being an agent. But you've got to imagine that when you, when you stop, you've got a wonderful union, yeah, yeah, which yeah. Gordon Taylor heads up. If you want to be a cameraman, a pilot, the PFA will contribute up to 75% of your tuition fees. Okay. But when you say to the union, well, I want to represent players, mm. my actual first aim was to work for the PFA. Gordon Taylor took a keen interest in me. He's a great guy to me as a personal friend. Yeah, yeah. I had some issues while I was at Fulham. I was on our times, had yeah. no money. Wrote to Gordon and said, look, I'm skin, I've got no money. And he sent me £2,000. And I've never forgotten that. And I thought, yeah, yeah. how can I repay my union and do something worthwhile for the union and for other players like me that may fall on hard times? Yeah. At that time, I think it's 97, I remember going to Upper Street mm. after our annual awards dinner. And what would happen, you'd have the whole of the football fraternity congregating on Grosvenor House, being in the piazza at Covent Garden. And I thought, this is crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll try and get my head around that. So I yeah. approached the bar in Covent Garden. This is a true story. I remember walking by and thinking, oh, it's a lovely building. Walked in and said, look, I want to put a party on. What for? Yeah. I said, like footballers. Yeah. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't have a clue. I just knew going into a club and seeing all these people spending all their money and maybe we could do this with the union and the union can get it back and it can go into the grassroots. I don't know. I just yeah. had loads of thoughts in my head. That's 97, so if you look at your household names in the last 10 years, so yeah. John Terry would have been now over at age. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ryan Giggs would have been 17, 18. It was, yeah. you know, it was massive. Those funds I created in that party and the, from all those things I did commercially, yeah. went to that benevolent fund. It was my way of paying back the fund that helped me. That helped you. Um, I played with guys during my England youth days, Tommy Caton, who played for Man City. Some people may know that name, yeah. killed himself. Davis from Man United killed himself. Peter Salvi, Tottenham died of leukemia. Yeah. These are stories you will not hear about. And I just wanted to put something back. Yeah. You know, yeah. for me, as I say, help me stir me to this agency world. Because the know? thing about it, you hear people saying that, you know, the union needs to do more for players when they finish mm. the game. But it's so good to hear 
that the union done a lot for you. Yeah, where I was in my life, it helped me. Yeah. And Gordon helped me sort of um, get me on my pathway to business, because that's the difference. When you're playing football, you're PAYE, yeah. everything is taken care of for you. You know, if you're traveling, you don't do anything. You bring yeah. your passport in, someone collects it, off you go. And, and a lot of players don't really want to go down the educational path. And a lot of players don't know what they want to do, even right. to this day. Yeah. You know, you speak to a 20 year old and what you're doing, you retire, like, come on, that's like, what? What are you on about? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be so playing till like, I'm 100. You know, yeah, it's yeah, different. yeah. They, they just need that, that educating, don't they? Yeah. Because a footballing career, it's very, very it's quick. A, it's, um, it goes yeah. quickly. I remember every single day. 